Okay, so today we are talking about the good old house hacker. This is Literacy Live, and I'm your host, Matt Literacy. We are giving you unfiltered access to the world of real estate, where we cover the market trends, the news, and honest answers to keep you ahead of the real estate game. Literacy Live is brought to you by Lincoln Title. Lincoln Title is the best and most efficient title company in Chicago and the best place to close your property. Literacy Live is also brought to you by Guaranteed Rate and Ben Cohen. Ben is the number one lender in Illinois and can close your loan as fast as eight days. House hacking is a huge thing in Chicago. So I brought in uh, the two house hacking bros of the group. (laughs) <laughs> Matt Piazza expert, uh, and uh, John Bag of Donuts uh, Comes. Is it Comes or Combs? Uh, Comes. Comes. With, With a Z? With a Z. With a Z at the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, John, do we go by John or John Paul? I never understand. Have to be uh, called John. Have to be called John Paul. Whatever you feel like. It. You can say okay, John. We'll just call you John. For yeah, the just call me yeah, John. John or JP. John. Um, who's one of our experts because he works with a lot of our multi-units as well. So um, maybe we'll kick this off. Uh, uh, John, <laughs> what is house hacking? So house hacking essentially is offsetting your living expenses. So, so you're I not mean, hacking a house. You're, you're not hacking it. There's no like okay. matrix down the screen. You're not typing anything. But if you want to offset your expenses, say it's a condo, for example, like an entry level. You buy a two-bedroom. The other bedroom, you rent out to your bro. He gives you five hundred thousand dollars depending on what you work out and that offsets all your expenses so you're living for cheaper you're still paying off an asset um essentially that's the hack is the is an armchair investment part of a house hack? an armchair but there's a lot of great terminology so an armchair is just you walk in pull it back and you're good for 30 years you don't have to worry about anything i love when we get the calls like i'm looking i'm looking to start house hacking get a nice little arm armchair investment i project. like that there's a lot you of know. great descriptive words um so do you guys think that it's uh easy or difficult to be a landlord in chicago because you, you get people who say like hey i want to be a house hacker not sometimes it's hard for me not to laugh and i'm not trying to be like rude to people i'm saying like i mean i want to shit ton of rentals and i'll tell you like it's it's kind of miserable. You know, it's another job. That's what people forget. It's a job. I mean, I think people like you know? just forget about like legitimate costs that could come up. Yeah. You know, it's like I want to I want to own a two flat. I want to live upstairs in the better unit, rent out the, the bottom unit. And then it's like, oh, you know, well, I also want this in rent. And then you miss that one month of rent because your price too high. Now you've lost that fifteen hundred for the year. And then it's like the AC goes out. Stuff could go south okay, really quickly. Okay, the AC quickly. goes out. Okay. Yeah, well. but and the other problem is a lot of these people that buy these, especially the multi units, like I mean, we see it. They're putting like no money down. They're doing FHA loans, right? So like yep. FHA is a big one, right? The house hack in. Big time. Why, why are people doing the FHA? It's just little little capital to get in. So, right. but then you come to like being competitive, and you got two cash offers you're going against. Your FHA. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you're a seller, which, which, one are which you means taking? and when you and for everybody out there, when you get an FHA loan, especially on a multi unit, it's got to you know, meet the FHA guidelines, which means like, you know, a door, literally the door, the front door has to be painted. Right. Because if it's got any like paint chips on it, you got to paint the door. It's super nitpicky. So yeah. they and have a good, their own inspection. Yeah. yeah. You have a, you have a separate FHA inspection and right. a good buy usually needs work. So they sort of clash FHA yeah. and a good deal. But, but now here's the problem. Getting back to what PAs had talked about earlier is that like, you know, so these guys, yo, know, so this is the problem I, I, I see for people who looking to kind of like, you know, start hacking these houses <laughs> is the fact that, you know, you're putting no money down, right? Because you're doing FHA. And then they're asking for like, you know, their closing costs covered. Okay. And then like Matt says here, so like they, they got like no, and, and you see their bank account because like, you know, like they give you the loan stuff. They got like maybe 5,000 bucks in cash reserves and then they lose a month of rent. So now they're, you know, it's 1500 bucks rent. Now they're down to 3,500 bucks and the AC breaks and it's seven grand for the AC. More and than now, you put down on the property. Now they got no, they have literally now no you're money. only getting twelve hundred a month instead of fifteen. No, but not but you don't have the money. They legitimately do not have the money. Right. I yeah. think yeah. the problem the too though, not to, to touch on that, is like when instead of pricing it at twelve hundred, you know, people look at it as well, I'm gonna get fifteen hundred, but losing a month of rent is far greater in my opinion. So, so know, when we I, talk about like is it difficult being a landlord, I will tell you the strategy I take and, and uh uh John 
uh, doesn't agree with this all the time, but I, I like with my rentals, like if I see something rented for like 2450, I'll put it at 2400. You undercut the market. Right, right. Because here's, but here's the difference is that like, I'll watch him take like a month to rent out your system. This is place. all, this is all inaccurate. I mean, no, that's not true. It's true. <laughs> I've seen it happen. It takes a while and then I'll put it up for 24. I'll rent it the same. They'll, they'll move in the next day. They'll be like, we want to move in tomorrow and we'll give you, I put a 24, 24, 50 is the last one. I get 2,500 bucks and I'm moving the next day. Right, yeah. but you're, you're not, you can't look at it as my point is the $50. It's 2,400 you're not getting for June. Right. That's and why I look that at it. That's, the 12 that's, that's why I look at it as, yeah. a, I'm like, if this sits for more than two weeks, I've already lost money. Right, you lose because the 2,400 well, or even or if it's 2,000. Yeah, but if, if it's 2,400 bucks for the month and it sits for two weeks, it's 1,200 bucks rather, that's lost. If, the, if right. the market says that this should rent for 2,400, wouldn't you rather get 2,250 than zero That's that, that is month? my that's, Because you're yeah. losing that. But that's my point as landlord, which a lot of people think is like really dumb, but I try to teach our, our if you, landlords. If you, if you undercut it by 100 bucks, you're losing 1,200 for the year on that. If you right. miss one month, you're losing 2,400. The goal and the strategy right. <laughs> should just be to price it at market value. Don't overdo it. Don't underdo it. Yeah. If you want to be super conservative, you can. But just price it what it's I don't worth. do hundred. And then I work. also, I also I, I don't think do it, I don't do it. I don't do it like hundred dollars. I always do like a little, just a little. You do bit. like fifty, I, yeah, seventy-five bucks. I also bucks. think I a, a lot of people under. will, yeah. which is dumb, but I like it. Yeah, it rents quick. Yeah. So, but then you times that by four years, and you're leaving money. I mean, on the table. Not, nobody stays for four but years. But the other thing you know? is, you can yeah, also times, people forget that you can also go to them in twelve months when they don't. They go, oh shit, our lease is already almost up. Oh yeah, by the way, two months 50 out, bucks it's more. fifty bucks more. Yeah, or it's I never bucks more. will raise someone. That's if good tenant. Renewing, yeah. Ever. So, so when we talk, when we talk rule. about house hacking, he just brought up a great point that I agree with. If I got a good paying tenant, yeah, that's paying me money, on time, I don't have any complaints about him. You you keep you don't raise the rent. No, okay, and, unless it, unless it's been like fifteen. Okay, years. I had a client who was, had a place in Lakeview. Um, and I went in and he's like, well, you know, these people are moving out. Will you rent one of the units for me? And I said, yeah, what are the, you know, I asked him what they were paying. It was like a hundred dollars. <laughs> it was like insane. It was like $800. <laughs> and I was like, what's going on here? Like this, this is a $2,800 unit. It's a three bed, two bath in Lakeview. Yeah. And he's like, I just, they've been there 15 years or whatever. And I'm like, I mean, okay, that's, well, that's like a little extreme. Like 15, dude, it was like, crazy. But here's, here's like the a thing. family. I was like, yeah, but here's the thing is like, you, you know what, you know, right? So like the, the problem with, uh, when we talk about, is it difficult being a landlord when you start trying to house hack, like. You, if you don't know what you're getting involved with, you get a bad tenant. Like, I've had bad tenants. You've had bad tenants. Yep. Like, it's the worst. I've been a bad it's, tenant. Yeah. It's, <laughs> 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 it's the worst, though, you know? And then they don't pay on time, or they're late, or they mess up the unit. And it's like, okay. And then, if just for everybody out there, when you're talking about, like, wanting a house act, here, here's another lesson. It's like, if you raise it by $50, and then they move out, right? Uh, then you got to pay commission, right? Month rent, okay? Yep. And then, like, usually there's about two weeks of lapse between it. So, like... Did you really make anything? You may have just you gotta lost twenty five hundred bucks. You, you, know, you got to do yeah, it's whatever. Like five hundred bucks to clean these. Yeah, there's I mean, the other thing, the cleaning fees are There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things to worry about. Especially one 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 thing. Especially is that like tenants have all the rights. Correct. Like, like if they don't pay you. Yeah. Okay. Like six yeah, months. You know. It's, to get them out. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, I've had people literally lose their houses for a year. Well, there's trying professional. To get out. There's professional tenants. There are. Know? They know they, the rules. They know the game. And they know exactly how to play. And there's there's certain things like you know. Uh, my wife and I, when we bought our place, um, we had about eight months left on our lease. Now, my thought was, okay, well, we, we found our place. This is our awesome condo we want to get. Uh, we don't want to wait on it. So what I said to the landlord, we've been there three years. I said, hey, you know, can we get out a little early? And she said, I don't know what that means. And I said, well, we want to end it early. And she said, no. I don't know why. <laughs> so she said, no. <laughs> so she said, no. And, I, you know, no names or anything like that. But what happened is, she didn't understand. I went to Lisa, our attorney, and I said, what, what are our options here? Like, we want to buy a place, and we can't afford to pay rent here at 2600 a month. So what we did is she said, well, she sent us to somebody, and, and they helped us out. But what he said is, did she send you all the disclosures every time you re-signed that lease? And all we did was initial a new date. I said, no. So the guy that we talked to, he said, you're out. So Cover your bases, there's certain, landlords. There's certain things that you got to understand. He said earlier, he's a bad tenant. Yeah, there he's I a know. bad tenant. Well, he's I thought, a guy you don't I want. Think that's what a did scenario. this landlord what a pair well, tenant. I mean, terrible well, I think, person I think at a, it, it's a scenario that you have to consider. Well, it's like, oh, we have a good tenant for four years, and then you know maybe that's the time. You should also think about being a good person in general, though, and often rent it out for free for the person. The good news well, is, I also, is I, trust me, I didn't say, like, screw you, we're out. What I did say is, you know, we'll help you find a, a – I'll help you find a um, – uh, sublease, I'll do whatever I can, you know.
But I was Call like, Joey the but I said, we'd like to be out. And I gave her three. It was like a 90 day close. They said, okay. we'll give you like three months. Okay. You know, you can find a new tenant. I've been here three years. Terrible made up for it. Made up for I think it. that's also a scenario where, like you said, you want to keep, you want to keep some, a good tenant, right? But well, then you let them out in three years and say, okay, but no that's, problem. That's the scenario when you're thinking about house hacking, you have to think about it. It's like tenants just up and leaving. Yep. Right. I'll never forget. So you got to think about a house hacking is, do you want to manage the property yourself or do you want to hire a management company, right? right. A management company like the ones I use charge 5%. Now, you have to think to yourself, like, well, if you have one or two renters, rentals, you could probably handle it yourself. But, yeah. like, when you start getting a little bit of a portfolio, you're going to need some help. When I realized that I needed a property manager, I'll never forget it was New Year's Eve. It was, like, our second anniversary. We were in, like, Mexico or something. My, my tenant called me up and said he wanted his light bulb changed. It was New Year's Eve. It was, like, 11 o'clock at night. Oh. And I'm like, I was like, just change the light bulb then, dude. And he's like, you effing change the light bulb. You're the landlord. And I was like, listen, dude, it's like 11 o'clock at night. Like, let's just relax. I'm like, I'll send the handyman there on, on the second. Was his name Matt Piazza? <laughs> <laughs> change my fucking light bulb. I was like, I was like, I was like, I'll send somebody there on the second. Cause you know, I'm not going to send a handy guy out there on the first. And I was, I was out of town on my anniversary and he's like, F you. And so then like, I was, you know, had a couple cocktails in me and I lost my temper on the guy. I'm like, fuck it, move out, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, you know, I, I left it, I hung it up, and, you know, whatever. And I woke up the next day to my building manager be like, yo, like, you're getting a fine because these guys didn't reserve the elevator and they moved out. Right. And they literally just moved out. And then I called the, the attorney. Right. And you know what she said? Nothing you could do about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And that, that was my point to that, my that, story is that, you better that's, know what, but, what you but can do. But when we talk about, like, do you want to hire a management company or not? Like, do you have yeah. – I mean, I have a little bit of a temper sometimes, you know? Uh, and I, I also am super busy and I can't deal with people. So what I've realized is that, like, I need to remove myself from the situation because right. I can't – I could deal with work stress, but, like, my own personal stress of finances of, like, being, like, dealing with some punk 23-year-old that's yelling at me to change his light bulb, like – I just can't deal with it. So I hire a manager. I think company. like anything, there's a breaking point. So you know when you need to transition to professional management. You yeah. just do. With condos, you're backed by an association. There's a property manager. If you're in a high rise, there's maintenance guys you could sort of lean on for stuff. Right. If you just walk into being an investor and you buy a six flat, just know there's so many factors to maintaining that property. You're going to get calls at, at midnight. And then if you talk about house hackers, I'm living on the first floor. I got a tenant above me or vice versa. Two in the morning, your tenant lives in your building. Hey, oh, my man. water's leaking. It's, it, it's all over the floor. Okay, what do you do? Uh, call John Paul. That's it. You know, I think, too, like when you get a lot of people, they're like, we want to buy a, a $500,000 place in Logan Square, and we want to live in it. And like, it's like this dream scenario where you live for free. I blame that on Instagram. It's like, yeah. what, what do you mean it you is. live? It is hold, the, hold on, it's, you live for free? Like, wh oh, okay, sounds amazing. And it's like, and then you go see a $500,000 too flat yeah and you're like holy shit yeah. like w yeah you could live here for free but th there's a lot of you're gonna spend 20 grand this year because the roof's gonna go this is gonna go this is gonna go it's like you ain't living for free you're, well, you're well, delusional I, I mean the other thing i tell people who who they live for free mentality which is like one of the questions can i live for free it's like yeah. well here's the thing you have to think about is like you know and we deal with this a lot with people i mean we're, we're dealing with people who are like making like almost a million dollars a year they're doing very well in life they, they live a very cush lifestyle and you go to their place and you walk in and it's like this like penthouse. You're like, this is nice. Right. This is nice. And like, I want to buy one of these places and free. And then we go there and they walk in and they're like, what, what is this place that you just took me to? I'm like, well, this is the unit you would live in. Right. And then you got like two bros that are living below you. Right. It's a it's downgrade. Like, yeah. And it's like, it's hard. I always tell people it's, it's, it's easy to go from like poor to poor because you're poor. Like, right. Like it's like when you get out of college, you, you lived in a shitty place. You go to another shitty place, like whatever, you know? But right. once you go to a nice place and, and then to go back down, it's 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 really tough to, to do. And to your point on this, it's 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 hard for these guys to do it. So, you know, the question is, and and, and John, I'll start with you. Hey, I'm John. Uh, <laughs> is what what would you for a guy that wants a guy or girl wants to start house hacking? Mm -hmm. Would you start with a condo, a two to four unit, or a six plus unit? I guess it all depends on what you can handle. But the best route is start with a condo. Start with a two bedroom condo. Rent out the other bedroom. Or a one bedroom. Yeah. I mean, you oh, yeah, you if you can, want a house hack, yeah, you if you want a house hack, if you yeah. want a house hack, you got to, you know, rent out the other bedroom. Everything is sort of, you know, you're in the unit. You got your friend. It's not a complete stranger. If he's not paying, you could be like, yo, bro, where's the rent versus a complete stranger that'll say, oh, man, the disclosures aren't signed. I don't got to pay this guy this month. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. there's so many outs. Yeah. But I mean, like and the other big things for a lot of people, because we do get a lot of these calls about people want to start hacking and, and then, then they uh want to get what they call an armchair investment and they want like a six unit is they, they have to remember is that like, you know, residential units only go up to five. After that, you got to get right. a commercial loan. A commercial loan is totally different product. 30% down you know, most of the time. And then the other problem that people don't understand is that they're like, hey, I want to buy a four unit. 
and I want to just use this as a rental. I don't want to live there. And we're like, well, here's the rate today for this. And I'm like, right. holy crap, I didn't know it's eight and a half percent to do this. I'm like, well, you know, you're only making, you know, like three to 4% on this. So you're losing 4% a month. Right. You know, and, and talking about cap rates, what is, what is a cap rate? You know, what, what, what's, why don't you break down what a cap rate is? So a cap rate is just at the end. So your P- gross. Piazza, you want to break down a cap rate? I, I mean, he's the expert. Let's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so a cap rate is your, your monthly rent collected every single month or for the sake of a cap, cap rate annually minus all of your expenses and your net operating income. So your taxes, your water bill, your garbage bill, your, you know, your common gas Vacan- bill, vacancy factors, vacancy factors, right. your management fee, every expense that goes into keeping this property up and running and what you actually take home at the end of the day. My question or my, the thing that I always tell people, you know, that's a good example of what a cap rate is, but is, is it ever included? Is it ever included? Is it ever included? Uh, you know, unexpected costs. I'm well, saying so, like, so that's you the problem, so you right? factor you factor in, you factor in miscellaneous costs, which is usually a couple hundred bucks. What if your fucking month? roof blows off? You well, know? that <laughs> that's average story, should hopefully like, work out. But like, would you, you always act, uh, do a little bit of a vacancy factor and you always factor in a little bit of a maintenance cost. Right. But here's the thing is when you're done doing it, you know, the cap is, you know, the rate of return, the ROI of what you're getting back. Yep. Now, the problem with Instagram and, and these these things is people think they're getting like 12 or 13% back crazy. on these things. Right. And like in the areas that we service, for the most part, I mean, you're getting like a 4 to 6% cap. Right. Like that's it. You buy a condo, it's like right now today, and you're not living in there, it's a negative 2%. Like you're, you're losing money with, with yeah, the with rates. Yeah, with the at. rates. Yeah, you're, lose, you're literally going to lose money. Yeah. And then, you know, people don't real, realize too is that like when you're buying in higher net worth areas, okay, the, the 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 cap you have to factor into is the you know rate of return on your money the appreciation mm-hmm, okay mm-hmm. so typically in higher net worth areas your, your property values appreciate higher now according to a couple of cranes articles where our, our values are going down quicker than anybody else in the country so it's not really like the greatest investment per se but you know at the end of the day you have to look at if you're going to buy in let's say a lincoln park mm-hmm. okay you're not getting a 13 percent cap rate on a two to four unit building right and that's a big problem that our house hackers have is they're like why am i getting five and a half percent like this is a terrible rate of return it's like well i mean you're in like a one of the best locations in the city of chicago of course you're not going to be getting that type of return right you know? and the silver lining is also cost of living we're so rent heavy in chicago that naturally your property is going to appreciate if you could call for a higher rent and you know as of recent the last two years what are we up 20 25 percent cost of living yeah so that's going to naturally make your property appreciate so you're not only are you getting the three to four percent annually and just your property value you're gonna get, you know, your return. What's your cap? What's there. the cap rate you're telling people that, that they should expect? If you're like in higher a, net worth area, um, you want to see anything over five is probably a nice conservative rate of return. I think a five. I think it's like when I see a six, personally, I'm like that's insane. And on a condo, honestly, it's like two to three percent. And that's it really good. Is. But now with these products, you know, money mm-hmm. markets with Chase and Goldman Sachs, you're gonna get five percent, four to five percent, with just, no headache. No tenants, no landlord, no no BS. It's so, just collect but, your so, money every month. Right, but I always tell people if you're looking to house hack, you know, one of the things is you're diversifying your assets, right? So you don't want to put all your money in a money market. You want to put all your money in bonds or stocks. Right. You know, you want to have different vehicles on the ground, and ultimately that's what leads you to true wealth. Is is have you don't put all your money in Apple. You right. know what I mean? Like you you want to get it out there, but you know, for my clients that buy into uh, condos, I compare condo house hacking to annuities. Slow and steady growth, one to three percent. There's nothing sexy about it. You're not going to retire off it. You're not going to get rich. Right. It's just another way to park your cash. And to be honest with you, a good way to look at it is like you're kind of parking your cash against what we call inflation. We mm-hmm. see inflation getting crushed. Uh, it's a good way to kind of like just kind of hide your assets. Uh, but it's definitely not something you're gonna get that you're going to get as rich on. Now, multi-unit buildings, buying the land. There's a couple of big agents I talk to all the time that they're like, I want to own the land. You know, and they think that's the best investment to get involved with. I own condos. Everybody thinks I'm an idiot. Now I just don't want to deal with the shit. So again, there's, there's, there's a lot of different ways to get wealthier, or do this. There's no, I always say there's no right or wrong answer. It's just whatever you want to do. The other big thing that house hackers have been looking at lately have, have been what we call Airbnbs. What do you guys think about these Airbnbs as investments for these? Well, you know, I, I and, and he's going to know who he is if he watches this, but we have a client that uh, used to kill it in Airbnbs. Yeah. And I used to help him get those properties, but there's a difference. There are zero airbnbs in the chicagoland area there's zero airbnbs and i I don't mean in the outskirts i'm saying right in downtown chicago in high rises in condos they don't exist so if you see somebody saying you know they go oh my my friend you know i saw this one on airbnb it's in uh, river north bullshit that's somebody that's a renter that's 
putting it on Airbnb and it's that's probably actually a big, that's a big that's a big that's a big one we see though is like renters are doing or what people are forget yeah. is that like there's condo buildings and there's apartment buildings. Apartment right. buildings have a certain uh, number of a certain percentage that are allocated by the city to to be executive rentals that these buildings just put up on Airbnb. So like there's, yeah, right. there, there's one on the corner of like state and I don't know what it is. You, you go on Airbnb and my client sends me all the time. I'm like, well, what about this one? I'm like that's right. a rental building. They're like, mm-hmm. yeah, I want to buy it and have it be a rental. I'm like, yeah, but that's a rental. It's just all rentals. Right. You can't right. buy into there. Right. But yeah. the problem is like Miami and these other states, you know, or cities, you you can buy. They, they sell condo buildings that are purely Airbnbs. Right, and, and that's just not realistic. Like, you can't Airbnb it. It's but what, what about a two- to four-unit building? Somebody if, wants if to buy one If you own the unit. entire building, you can make that whole building right. an Airbnb. You own... But do you, think that's a, do you think that's a better rate of return? Or do you think a better rate of return for a house hacker is... It's definitely going to be a better rate of return. What's more of an armchair? A, a long-term lease is always yeah, the play. Yeah, it's, it's seasonal, too, in a place like Chicago. Like, people, yeah, Lollapalooza weekend, you're going to get eight grand for the building. You people know, also you don't in? realize <laughs> that with an Airbnb comes a – you think it's hard being a landlord with a year lease. The turnover with an Airbnb, you're turning this place over every 48 to 72 hours. you got to have a cleaning crew on standby. Right. Someone breaks the drywall. You rent it to bros going to a concert. They get rowdy. You know, it, it takes a whole team. And people that have Airbnbs that scale it, have a whole network of people in place yeah. to turn these over quickly, and it's a whole operation. There's a, a there's a whole other operation uh, that I see with that one client I was talking about. Um, he he would buy a bunch of these homes, and then he would do shared spaces. Yeah. So what he would do is he would turn a listing of a house or a two flat into fifty five listings, and yeah. he'd be like, "Holy shit!" And he'd charge eight to twenty dollars. He's bed. essentially running a hotel, and it was insane. You know, but that again, he he it was a twenty four hour job. I mean, right. he would tell me like. I'm driving from, you know, 63rd to 87th to back to 63rd to change sheets to get a guy in. You got to buy. Yeah. It. He needs 50 that's like a locks. T- I mean, that's totally a totally different, different animal. Like that's not that's not something that's that's like a real hardcore house hacking. Yeah. I mean, that's that like, was that's, that's like that's like a that's enter like enter the matrix. I mean, yeah, and, he, like, and he was it's like a different but, level. But that's my so, thing. So, so that's but that totally that brings you to the point of like, what about you know buying into the, these multi-unit buildings? And we see these all the time with the illegal garden units. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> we call um, them non-conforming. Yeah, non-conforming is the, the correct terminology for it. But you know, unfortunately, when you hear about like, uh, you know, you go on the news or you, you see the news and there's like one building that burns down and the news is like uh, there's like 17 people displaced. And you're like, how is there seven? Like, you know, you guys ever think about it? You're looking at it, you're like, there's a building. How does 17 people fit in that building? It's like they got a lot of non-conforming units, yeah. you know? And a lot of times the two units, what they'll do is they'll make the basement, the garden unit, uh, an illegal first floor, and they'll take the attic, especially in the bungalows. Yep. And they'll make that. They'll, 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 they'll build staircases that, uh, coach house. from the back. And they'll go up there. So now you got four families in what should be a two-family house. Right. right. So, you know, and now you're talking about a house hack into extreme. We see a lot of our investors try to do this route. What are the risks of buying a, un- a building with an illegal, non-conforming unit? So there's liability. You said that you know if something burns down, if you have someone in there. To be honest, though, the city of Chicago doesn't really police it. And if you just look at it from a mere investment standpoint and a cash flow standpoint, the property is going to be worth more. Regardless if it's zoned a legal three flat and say it's two with an illegal or non-conforming third or a garden unit, in my opinion, that property is still worth more money. So you're advising people to, that nobody's going to... You, you I would know, say they're so the they're so common in Chicago. I would say they're like every other building with a non. So, so you would unit. say like yeah, you see a lot of these basements. They're garden units. Somebody built them out, did the whole thing, and then if somebody were to actually look it up and figure it out when they go to sell it, they're probably going to say, hey, this is well, you, you can't, can't market it. It's hard to get a loan in there. So what they do is they make you take out the gas line in the kitchen, is right. it? And then so you they, they literally we've right. had this happen like five or six times this year. They take the stove. They put it on a pallet. They Cap wheel the it. Gas line. Yeah, and then they, they bring it back it. in after closing. No, they they wheel it to the storage room. <laughs> And then they like you know put a curtain over the bathtub to show it's not a legal dwelling. <laughs> and, then, and then they take all the people's clothes and put it in a suitcase in the back and like nobody's living here. Yeah. And they're like, what's this for? Like it's all storage. And the guy's like, okay. Right. And then you get along. There's a bad. So like <laughs> you know, I, I feel like a lot of the house hacking stuff. I, I I am like I'm a pretty raw personality. I am a buy the book type of guy. I, I feel like a lot of the, the house hacking stuff is just like a lot of really skirting the the, the stats. Well, I mean, until you get it's it's like he kind of touched on. It. It's like until somebody calls you out or you have a major problem the problem is it's is not that policed. yeah right. it's, nobody's it's walking around going it's not what's going on in here yeah. but many people but are I, in the basement I, I, me personally i'm a worst case scenario what what if god forbid the place burns down and god forbid somebody does downstairs die own like, your properties in an llc 
Okay. That's well, very important. So, it really is. I know. I'm just saying, like, I, morally, I just, I wouldn't feel comfortable. Me personally. JPC, okay? L-E-L-L-C. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but I'm saying the average investor, 99% of investors don't give a shit. No. You just care about the cash. That's how slumlords and, are born. You're yeah. first non-conforming. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's just how it is. I mean, that's, I mean, wh- what is a slumlord? You know, talking about that. What, what would you say a definition is of a slumlord? It's when, and are house hackers considered slumlords? I mean, I think it's really easy to fall into that slumlord track when you first start being in. It's a pretty investor. derogatory term if you think a about it. A slumlord? Yeah. Yeah, it's just stuff goes to the wayside. You're not really on top of maintenance items. You're not, you know, you get a call at midnight, water's leaking. All right, I'll get to it in a couple days. Yeah. Versus a good landlord is going to answer it, have a plumber there, and, and take care of something when, when the problem occurs. They so take advantage of the systems a little bit more, don't too. Don't give a shit. You know, they, they don't give a shit. You know, take the, more of the government money to, to fix up stuff, but they don't fix anything up with it. You know, uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, kind of shady things that do happen, the investment stuff. So I, I could see why people bring up things like rent control and things like that, because yeah. I do think there's a lot of bad investors out there that make good investors look bad. Yep. Uh, and, of course, you know, bad things will make more noise than good things. There's bad you know? tenants out there, too. Yeah, well, we already talked about what you do. I mean, like a guy that's a real estate agent. What's, what, what's, it was what's 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Was like, that was like six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did it with my kids. We're, we're out of here. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> you left one behind. <laughs> the, the, the landlord's like, who's this kid just like sitting my in the My point of telling that story um, is that you better know and cover your ass if you're going to be a landlord because be if thorough. you don't know the be rules, thorough. if you don't know the rules and you try, you know, strong arm in somebody like you said you you could end up getting screwed right. what, what's what's the best piece of advice you got for somebody who wants to get in the house oh you know before we get to that but look back up i want one question before we end this thing is like why do you think house hacking has become I, because i feel like i in especially last since the pandemic i don't think i've ever gotten more calls from people who literally call me up it's like i want a house hack and get myself an arm-to-arm investment. We laugh about it. We're not being like rude about it, but it's like, you guys got to remember for everybody out there, we're getting like seven or eight calls like this a day. And it's like, people are saying like, I want a $500,000, you know, four unit building and a heart of Lincoln Park. <laughs> yes. I want to live for free. If you find it, you send know? it over. And we'll, then, we'll yeah, pick and then it I want three today. units. I want the three units to be pulling in roughly about $3,000 a month. So I'd like to see about a 15% cap rate. And, and the reason we're laughing is like, if you're out there listening to this and you're like, that doesn't happen, it happens what, seven, eight times a day? Multiple a day. Times a, a day. day. A day. Yeah. $500,000 hour, four unit building. I'm like, dude, like we're selling parking spaces for that much. Where do you want to buy? Yeah. Not a four, the, the dirt right. alone's worth a couple million bucks just in like, where do you want to right. buy? It's like, we'll be like driving down like, be like, hey, you see where that big house is? We're like, yeah, I'm like, I'd like to buy that. Right. A tandem then, parking yeah. spot is, is $100,000. Yeah. What you yeah. want? You want a $400,000? Yeah, but, but do you th- <laughs> what, what do you guys think? Why do you think it's, it's become so popular? False lately? expectations. All the classes that are out there, like, oh, swipe up, learn how to house hack. And, FHA loans and all these yeah. different methods to pull equity out and all these different programs, it's just unrealistic. So my advice would be, it's a long-term play. It's a conservative investment, especially in Chicago. We're not a home run city where you're gonna double your money in a year. Slow and steady. You could play the market and if you have good timing, yeah, you could do better. Maybe a, a 5% jump start or a 10% yeah. upstart, but you're never gonna see the Florida returns where, oh, I bought this property for 500 grand, in two years it's worth a million. Like maybe in a crash, maybe in a recession, yeah, which doesn't is not coming. But but in Florida, you also get those. You know, you get the highs, but they also have big lows. They, know, they do. Go, they go from like a million five to like a million bucks. It's all about timing. You so know? my my uh, method is buy and hold forever. You can't lose for a 20, 30 year period. Yeah, I, I think people's expectations of wanting to be like, let's say you get a first time home buyer or condo buyer, or whatever. They, they you know they want to buy a three hundred thousand dollar unit like right away the guy's 25 girl, whoever and they're like you know they're like i want well can i rent this can in the rent long it? term yeah. and you're like dude shut up like uh, honestly like what are you talking about it's like uh, all right how long are you going to live in chicago well yeah. i don't know i'm going to live here a year and then i want to rent it out it's like okay so you're buying a three hundred thousand dollar condo and now you're you don't know what goes into that like, I, I being will, a landlord do you really want to be a landlord I, I will say that probably one of the biggest things that we have for people for our our right. our, our listings are people that are in that category. They're the younger people. They bought it. Um, they lived there for a couple of years. Then they rented it for one year. And then they're selling And it. then they're selling Because they it. realize that they're losing money they, every they, month. Well, not only are they losing money, but they're like, I, I, get, I, I get this at least a few times a week where they literally said to me, like, I didn't realize how much work right. it was. Because like, what people forget is that, like, 
people want like we're in the sales customer experience uh you know a customer experience type of industry like so we understand that when people want stuff they want it now if they're not going to go to you know if we don't give it to them they'll go to somebody else and like if we don't get back to them in 10 seconds like right. it, it's the end of the world but what people the average person is never put in that position so these 20 something year olds who kind of live by the seat of their pants and have like no responsibility they could become a landlord and all of a sudden they're like they're calling me and they're like why is my tenant emailing me 75 times right. a day and i'm like Oh, are you a landlord now? They're like, yeah, I turned that place. You sold me a landlord. I'm like, oh, if it's only seven, five times a day, it's actually pretty, that's pretty solid. Well, it's also unrealistic too, that like you would think like you get your first job, you're making 120 grand or whatever you're making, 100 grand. And then you think in your head, well, in two years, I'll be making 250 and then 300. And then, uh, and then, so I want to keep this. And then that's going to be my investment. I want to buy two or three more. It's like, okay, well, that's great. If it happens. People (laughs) also forget that in order to hold a property, like your income has to be there. Then (laughs) that's income things becomes an issue. So not many people can still hold a property, rent it, especially now with rates up right to think that you're gonna to think that you're gonna be able to that you're not gonna need the equity out of this one to purchase the next one i I agree my my best advice and i'll close it out with this for for anybody trying to become a landlord is know what you're getting involved with know Mm -hmm. that this is a job realistic and know that this is going to be a lot of your time and you're going to dedicate a lot of time money and energy to it and know that that's not a huge return. We're talking like a negative 2% to tops 4 or 5% return on your money. Long term. You could easily get more money in the S&P long term than you can in this. It's just a different way to get rich and to park some cash. But it shouldn't be the only thing you do. And I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just saying that, like, don't go into this thinking this is a home run that you're going to retire by having this place. And don't underestimate the fact that everything starts off great with a tenant. And then the second things go wrong, you're an asshole. Yeah. But still invest. It's a great idea to buy property. Right. Just yeah. know, just <laughs> know, is. well, just know what it you're is. doing is, I, I mean, guess, listen, the more. Everybody <laughs> here, everybody here owns places. You know, uh, me and John Paul both own, you know, quite a few properties. Now, I would never invest with John Paul. I just don't think he's a good investor. But I'm saying, like, in general, I, I, I do think it's a good, good thing to do, and I do think it's a good strategy. We're not trying to sound negative. We're trying to teach people out there, like, what really happens in it? And I, I think the problem is, and, and, and it may come off as we're a little negative on this because we're joking around a lot, but it's like, we're just realistic. I think everybody, everything on Instagram and YouTube and all this stuff is like, this is the best thing I've ever done in my life. Like, if it make your money. If it's too good to be true, it well, always that's is. That's what I mean. And that's, you're exactly right. Yeah. And you touched on it too, where it's like, you know, you get 10 phone calls a day where it's like, I want 15% return. You know, it's like, all right, well, if yeah, you I find mean, it, send it yeah, over. You, yeah. We'll, we'll go get it. Yeah, exactly. So... <laughs> You know, if you guys got any other questions about how to house hack, looking for that armchair investment, we're, we're definitely happy to help. We're happy to go into further detail on any types of investment properties, what will uh, work best for you guys. So thanks for listening to Literacy Live.